Namaskar, this is Sanjay Mishra presenting you the Thursday Wednesday hebdomadal headlines and also major highlights from Enviro Annotations published on 30th November 2022. This was the second issue in our fifth year of publication. A study report titled Carbon Capture, Utilization and Storage Policy Framework and its Deployment Mechanism in India was released by Niti Aayog on Tuesday. The report explores the importance of carbon capture, utilization and storage, also called as CCUS, as an emission reduction strategy to achieve deep decarbonization from the hard-to-abate sectors. The report outlines broad-level policy interventions needed across various sectors for its application. CCUS plays a vital role in meeting India's NDC targets for achieving 50% of its total installed capacity from non-fossil-based energy sources, 45% reduction in emission intensity by 2030, and also taking steps towards achieving net zero by 2070. In the matter of Varun versus Central Pollution Control Board and others, OA No. 32 of 2020, the National Green Tribunal has directed Haryana State Pollution Control Board to revisit the waiver of environmental compensation earlier framed by the board within three months' time. In OA No. 606 of 2018, hearing the matter of Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh, the NGT principal bench headed by Justice Adars Kumar Goel chairperson imposed environmental compensation charges of 200 crore rupees to each state. However, the NGT bench accepted the prayer of Puducherry Chief Secretary for ensuring availability of 178.92 crore rupees by transferring the amount in a separate ring-fenced account to be operated as per the directions of the Chief Secretary Puducherry and not levying a compensation. In OA No. 505 of 2022, pertaining to the matter of Devendra Kumar and another versus State of Himachal Pradesh, Himachal SPCB reports NGT, all is well. DFO penalizes offenders and road projects. Oil spills in oceans can occur naturally, which can have huge impacts on the nature itself. But the most damaging oil spills that occur derive from anthropogenic causes. With better control and care, the number of oil spills have decreased greatly down to an average of 78.8 from the 1970s to 6.2 spills per year in the 2010s. Indian Coast Guard conducted the 24th National Oil Spill Disaster Contingency Plan and Preparedness Meeting in Chennai, Tamil Nadu on 30th of November 2022. Tourism has emerged as a key driver of economic growth. It is one of the fastest growing economic sectors. India aims to become a world leader with 1 trillion US dollar from tourism sector by 2047. UN Environment Research has indicated that the tourism sector's consumption of key resources like energy, water, land and materials, materials such as fossil fuels, minerals, metals and biomass, is growing commensurately with its generation of solid waste, sewage, loss of biodiversity and greenhouse gas emissions. In a business-as-usual scenario, Tourism would generate through 2050 an increase of 154% in energy consumption, 131% of greenhouse gas emissions, 152% in water consumption and 251% in solid waste disposal. In order to develop sustainable and responsible tourism destinations and promote sustainable tourism in the country, the Ministry of Tourism organized a first regional workshop on development of sustainable and responsible tourism destinations at Kajuraho on 29th November 2022.
Delhi Zoo celebrates International Jaguar Day on Tuesday. School students participate. Dr. Prasant Gargava, Member Secretary, Central Pollution Control Board, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, has been honored with the Air Quality Management Lifetime Achievement Awards by India International Conference on Air Quality Management, IICAQM, at IIT Madras. Editorial Opinion, NABL and Environmental Labs, talks about the updated list of 82 suspended laboratories, highlights quality reports on environmental laboratories and the need for action against those. The column, Impact of Nickel in Global EV and Battery Markets, discusses the issue of Indonesia's failure in convincing the WTO on the country's nickel export ban. Questions, does this mean India will remain dependent on other countries for supply of raw materials or batteries? Will EVs and hybrid vehicles also continue to drain out India's forex reserve and continue to plunder the public pocket? Please support this channel by subscribing to our Environmental Weekly Newspaper and Viro Notations. It is India's first Environmental Weekly Newspaper. You can pay for subscription through the UPA QR code displayed on the screen. The Expert Appraisal Committee for Industry Sector 1 Projects in its 17th meeting held under the chairmanship of Rajiv Kumar and I is retired, recommended all projects except the proposal of Resources Pellets Concentrates Private Limited, seeking environmental clearance to set up pellet feed cum beneficiation plant at Somala Purvilez in Bellari district of Karnataka. Based on the EEC subcommittee recommendations, the company has been asked to revise or adopt drainage conservation, quick disposal and reuse of tailings, CER activities, village adoption and other mitigation measures to minimize the environmental impacts due to the project activities. Notable that there were objections for issuance of environmental clearance to the project. The EIA data for expansion project of Satyam Iron and Steel Company Private Limited, which caught the EAC's recommendation for grant of environmental clearance, shows that 20% capacity expansion causes 50% increase in PM2.5, 39% increase in NO2 level, and more than 18% increase in domestic wastewater. The EAC also held two separate meetings with steel industry representatives and accredited EIA consultants. The EAC for River Valley and Hydroelectric Projects advises the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change to consult experts on the matter of cumulative impact assessment and carrying capacity study in Tista River Basin. The EAC returned expansion proposal of Andhra Pradesh Power Generation Corporation with a note that the EIA report was not prepared as per compliance of terms of reference granted by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. National Water Mission organizes 42nd Water Talk, deliberates on water use efficiency and water governance issues in India. The talk was given by M. S. Siddiqui, an environmental law practitioner, on the subject mainstreaming water use efficiency in India, need for pluralism in water governance. The meeting was presided over by Archana Verma, Mission Director, National Water Mission. IIT Madras students roll out first electric racing car. It can accelerate from 0 to 100 in 4 seconds. Uttar Pradesh Government's Department of Environment Office Building gets BE's 5-star rating. Havel's Sustainability Report hides significant data on water and waste. The Scope 1 GHG emissions increase by over 7% year on year. Plants, 15 lakh saplings, but no survival and growth data.
Motihari in Bihar records seven worst AQA days in November. Betiha follows. Aizol, Shillong, least polluted. Six good AQA days in Chennai. Months average good AQA days, 15. To know more, please subscribe to Enviro Annotations. It's published every Wednesday. Annual subscription for subcopies comes at a nominal price of Rs. 1100 only. You can pay through the UPI QR code displayed on the screen or to mobile number 9818326647. Please share your valuable comments on this video in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the like button. It costs nothing to you but encourages us tremendously. And also, share this video with your friends and colleagues. And if you have not subscribed so far to this channel, please do it now. You can also share your stories, news, research synopsis, your articles for publication in our print version and share your videos for this YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching this. We will come back with another episode for you. Till then, do take care of yourself and your environment.